What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the hobby boxes and some of the top boxes that sold between March 15th and March 21st. Let's get right into it. Hello, everybody. My name is Adam from Heroes for Sale. Thank you all for clicking this video. Make sure you leave a comment if you are interested in this topic. If you like the video, hit the like button. And if you are new, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. So like I said, not surprising, after a long after a long run for ML, for flagship MLB set, Panini Prism, which released in this last cycle, uh, became first, which actually then Top Series 1 is still number two. Topps Chrome Sonic Baseball, still number three. And then Donruss Elite Basketball, number four. Um, we'll go through kind of here. Uh, so number one, Panini Prism, that's not super surprising. I do wonder when with these boxes, like driving some of the prices, if it's breakers buying the boxes or if it's like just regular people buying the boxes, uh, because for breakers, for it kind of probably depends on the breaker him, him or herself. Like there are probably breakers that are getting stuff direct from Panini and direct from top. So they're not buying stuff from eBay. So realistically, this is probably, um, this is probably consumers, and I'm actually just going to open up and check some of the pricing that we've been seeing on these boxes and see how the trends are going here. Yeah, I mean, Hobby Pack, this is what this one is for 170 That's pretty wild. I think there's 12 packs, so, like, that's – I don't know why that's pretty crazy to me. Um, so 650 it looks like that's what's um, – that's what it's selling. No huddle for 3 650, 3, 330, hobby pack 72, 350, 700 for these boxes. Yeah, it's not super surprising. I think that Prism has continued to be one of the most popular sets. You know, I do wonder like where the line is in terms of what people will end up spending on Prism. Like, if I think one of the problems with it maybe is that it's such a popular product that people that are opening it that maybe aren't on social media don't understand how much of this product there really is. So they look at the price of the box and if they're just buying prism every single year and they don't really look at pricing, which I, I can't imagine many people at this point are, but I'm sure there are people out there. And I don't know if maybe that's why these boxes are so expensive, but like if somebody every year is just buying a box of prism or they're buying multiple boxes of prism or a case or whatever, um, they're probably the ones driving some of these eBay, eBay prices uh, and you know, around that, like around that 650 range for a box of prism. Um, and, and I don't know, I, I think I almost wish that there was a way that there's probably no way that obviously cause Panini wants to make the most amount of money from these products. So they're not going to step in and say, well, we're not going to charge, we're not going to charge X amount. We're going to charge what the market is kind of going for. And I guess eBay, that's not necessarily what the market is going for, uh, or eBay versus what Panini is charging is a little bit different. And I think this maybe gets into a conversation of like where, like I said, where is the line of what a product should be priced at? I think if, I think it should be up to Panini to price these products properly. And I think that they should come out and say something along the lines of like, we don't condone this reselling of the product that obviously not something that they would do, but I feel like at some point they need to figure out a way to, they need to figure out a way to price these boxes at a price that maybe there isn't as much resale value. Um, and, and I don't, I don't know if it's like a regulatory thing or something where like, this is sort of where I think that maybe within sports cars, there could be more regulations that come in. Like if you want to buy and sell boxes like this, like you maybe have to have a license buying and selling cards. I don't think necessarily, but I think, boxes where it's like you're buying a product that's unopened and selling it maybe there should be a little bit more of a barrier for that type of sale because i think unfortunately unfortunately i don't think if you're buying this box for 650 dollars you're going to be getting 650 dollars worth of cards in the box itself um and i think that panini needs to kind of step in and tops too i mean even fanatics maybe they'll come in and do something along these lines but like I feel like when it comes to reselling boxes and I actually just think this could be a reselling of things in general. Like I think it's okay. This resell use thing. So like in this example, it's like the cards that are coming out of the box. I think it's okay to resell those. I think if you're outside of cards, I think if you're bought you, but like use sneakers or like use clothes or used 
anything along those lines. But I think, I don't know. I just get like, a f- I don't know if I like that people can buy and sell new things necessarily. So like unopened boxes of sports cards, um, you know, an unopened, uh, you know, if you, if you get like, if you in the sneakers app, or if you're getting like a Supreme drop or something along those lines, I don't necessarily like that. There is a market for people to come in and buy and sell those things. I'm actually surprised that more companies haven't come in and stopped the buying and selling of like new items because like for a company to, for a company to come out with a product for this box, for example, like the 650, I'm sure Panini would love to charge 650 for this box. Uh, but I don't think that they, that they did necessarily. So it's like, there's money being made within the cycle of a product coming out and Panini isn't really, isn't really getting any of the profit there like sure you know if somebody i don't necessarily know what people were buying these boxes from panini for but like if people are buying the boxes you know if they bought them for 350 and they're selling them for 650 like that's 300 dollars that maybe wouldn't that that's not being made by panini and i don't know if it's like they should charge more and come out with less product or how exactly they would regulate the, you know, the buying and selling of these boxes. But I think that I, I just wish that there was a way that you could not necessarily guarantee you're going to get the value from these boxes when you open them. But I just wish that there was a way that consumers weren't buying the boxes and then not getting anything close to the value because of how many cards there are. And because, and it's not even necessarily, I guess if you buy the box right now and sell the cards right now, you probably will be able to recoup at least, you know, I'd say maybe 300. I guess it depends on kind of which cards you're pulling out of there. Like that's kind of my, my thought process is like, if you can buy a box of something and you can get 50% of the value back versus, uh, you know, versus like if you buy the, because there's probably not a good chance you're going to get a hundred percent of all that. It, like I said, it does depend on how, what's coming in the box. Like if you are, you know, if you get a box and you're pulling like a crazy auto rookie auto or like a one of one or anything along those lines, then yeah, sure. You're probably getting the value of the box back, but like, I don't know how many people, I, I guess I would be interested to know how many people have come into sports cards and maybe bought a box of Prism for six fifty, and then they don't get anything really, and then that kind of drives them out. To be completely honest, like I think it's unfortunate to really think that way, but I do think that there's probably a crowd of people that that has happened to. Unfortunately, I think that there has been there probably is a group of collectors and people that have come into sports cards, and unfortunately, they bought a box for six fifty. And then they open the box and they get a hundred dollars worth of value or they, or, you know, or they bought like a first off the line box from Panini or they bought a box from Panini for 300. Because I think, like I said, I just wish that there was a way that maybe Panini or one of the card companies could come in and regulate the pricing of these boxes on the secondary market. Just because like 650 for a box of cards is like pretty ridiculous, especially when it comes to like Prism is supposed to be like the, the top base product for Panini. So it's like, if Prism is six fifty, if you're buying a six six hundred and fifty dollar box of Prism, like that's you're 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 definitely not getting six hundred and fifty dollars worth of value. Like I said, unless you're pulling something some crazy one of one. Um, but even if you if or if there was a way that like you were guaranteed a certain type of autograph. Like instead of it, like I think in the box it says per box on average, like how many autographs you're going to be getting. Um, like if they were to say you're guaranteed a rookie autograph or you're guaranteed like certain types of cards within the box, like you're guaranteed a certain amount of, of rookie cards within the box, or you're guaranteed a certain amount of numbered rookie cards. Maybe that could be a way to bring in more value. Um, And I don't know, maybe if I, I think, but I do think that if like, if Panini was out here charging $650 for a box like this, I would hope that they would be able to figure out how to bring a lot more value, maybe bring the print run down a little bit more, um, maybe figure out a way to just give the people buying the box a little bit more value than they're seeing. Because unfortunately for, for some people coming in and buying a $650 box, they may not even realize like if this is their first cycle, like if they're coming in for the first time and they're seeing prison prices, 
unfortunately, they're going to run into a scenario where they may not even realize that like last year, I, I, and I don't, I'm making the number off, up, up off the top of my head, but like they don't even know that last year prison boxes were 300 or 400 or $500. They're just paying the 650 because they heard people talking about prism is the product to buy. And they, you know, they're new, so they don't know what they're buying. And I don't know, you know, I guess if I were new and I was saying you have to buy this thing for $650, that would be much different. And I wouldn't really, that's not something that I would do necessarily, but like, I don't know. There's maybe people that are like, whatever, I'm going to, that's just what the price of sports cards are nowadays. Like, because they might also look at this product and say like, Prism is like national treasures. Like they might think that's what it is, even though Prism is probably closer to Topps flagship than it is. Prism football and basketball is probably closer to Topps flagship than it is national treasures. And I get the pricing isn't exactly the same. Like national treasures is going to be way more expensive than Prism and uh, Topps flagship is going to be way less expensive. But people, I don't think people might think that these boxes, if they're selling for 650, these people are probably expecting it to be much closer to National Treasures than they are Topps Flagship. Like if you can buy a, you know, but I think if you can buy like a blaster box for 30, that's fine. Like I do, I do, you know, that was one of the things that I think from, from the past couple of years that I've thought that might be a good thing for sports cards is to raise the price of hop, uh, raise the price of blaster boxes that you can buy at retail. Unfortunately, the rise in price also came with a rise in print run, which I don't think correlated to like something that was good that happened. Like, I think that they probably should have increased the print run and kept the pricing the same or vice versa. Like, I don't think it was, I don't necessarily think one way or the other. No, I don't think, I don't think what they did, which is increase the print run, increase the price of the boxes, was fair to the consumer. Um, and I don't know. It's 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 like one of those things where it's like the I I support the company that's trying to make money, but I also support the consumer that's trying to make money. So it's it's a tough spot to be in where like I want someone to open a box of cards and be able to sell a decent amount of them if that's what they want to do. If they want to sell a decent amount of them and get some of their money back and then maybe put it into another box or you know flip buy some other cards or something along those lines. But I think if someone's coming in and buying a $650 hobby box of Prism, there's probably a decent chance that they're not seeing $650 worth of value. If you're buying a $30 blaster, there's probably a decent chance you could get 40, you could probably get like 20 to $25 worth of value from that blaster box. Um, but the but in the past, there's probably a way better shot that like if you were finding a blaster of Prism at retail for 20, there was probably a way higher shot that you were there's probably a much better shot that if you were buying a blaster box in the past couple of years for 20 to $25, kind of, I think Walmart always was kind of upping the price a little bit, but like 20 to $25, there was probably a decent shot that you were able to get all of your money back or make money on the box. And that would then kind of self-sustain them, the buying of the cards, which I think one thing that sports cards has, that's much different than most other industries when it comes to like a hobby is that it's a it can be a self-sustaining hobby if you're disciplined enough you can buy and sell boxes or you can buy and sell cards and you can make money in a way that makes it so you don't really you can almost bankroll your cash and you don't have to worry about buying more or adding more money into this cycle where if you come in like that and that's kind of where i think this this example the box comes in like i the 650 dollars if someone's spending 650 dollars and they only get a hundred dollars worth of worth of cards then you're kind of potentially losing more money that could be made for the company or could be made by somebody trying to buy and sell cards. And I guess it's all other, the other conversation is like, should it, should it be like that? Like, should you be able to buy a box? Should it be a consumable rather than a potential like asset? I guess is maybe the question that I think it has become sort of more prevalent over the past few years. Like, and I think it should, I think, what makes sports cards great, in my opinion, is that you can come in and buy a box and then sell the cards and then reuse some of the money that to buy another box. Um, but I guess that's maybe the question is like, should sports cards become be consumed and not um, flipped for money? 
that's the kind of a conversation I think a lot of people do have on social media. I think, you know, that's kind of the big question of like flippers and investors and collectors. It's like the conversation that I think is having people are having on social media pretty frequently, in my opinion, like should, should you, should money be something that is really kind of the, the barrier entry, I think. And unfortunately it sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. I mean, like I said, if you're buying a hobby bot, if you're buying a hobby box versus a blaster, you're probably better off buying the blaster. You could probably make some of your money back. I, like I said, 50% is kind of a threshold that I said, if you can, if you can get a box and you can get 50% of your money back, then that's good because it should be the opening the box and packs should be fun. Uh, if it's a way that you can sell the cards to make money back or sell the cards and buy more boxes, that also I think is a good option for people buying boxes and opening packs as well. And then, yeah, so uh, Flagship, that one dropped to number two. Still not surprising. I mean, they're still coming out with 2022 baseball products, which I talked about on Thursday's show and on an episode uh, of the, the show on YouTube coming out, which I, I don't know, I, 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 I which means there's, it's weird because there's a weird crossover between last year's rookies and this year's rookies, both coming out in the same year. I think that if I'm tops, I need you need to choose one or the other. You can't have it both ways. Like you, you – and. and uh, who am I to say, I guess, but it's, it's just, I think it gets, it gets confusing for new people. And that's sort of uh, one way I like making content. What one, like giving out tips. And, and I understand that sometimes the content can be a little bit nuanced, but like, I think it gets confusing for people that maybe want to buy a box of like the tops. I think it's the gold label, I think is the product that came out and it's going to have like Bobby Witt and it's going to have like Julio Rodriguez rookies, but then they buy like a box of this and the Julio Rodriguez who's on the cover of the box. He's not a rookie in that product. Like I think it gets confusing for people and it gets a little bit convoluted um, because like down the road, that's where things, that's where things I think will get a little bit more confusing because of like release dates of the box and the dates on the box itself. Uh, that's where, you know, we don't have the context that we have right now. Like we understand that, the gold label is coming out and it's 2022. But if somebody is buying that box in the future, they're probably going to be a little bit confused because they're going to say, why did the 2022 baseball box come out in March of 2023? Like that's probably going to be a little bit confusing for consumers. And I think, you know, the, the making things easier to understand, I think is going to be very important in the future uh, because I think as more products come out and as more information comes into this industry, um, it is going to get a little bit confusing for people coming in, but I think, uh, I think the information as it's being, what's the word I'm looking for as it's being kind of, um, what's the word not collated, not, um, fil I guess filtered maybe, or collected. Um, that's where I think there may be the confusion because like, not every article is going to say in 2020 and in 2021 products got backed up. So that's why you're seeing a 2022 product come out in 2023. But either way, I think that's sort of where, where I'm at when it comes to like the crossover of the rookie classes. Cause like with basketball, I mean, we've seen this hat, we're seeing this happen too. Like there was a, there was like a bunch of old product with like LaMelo ball rookies coming out at the same time as like when the Cade Cunningham rookies were starting to come out. And then even this year too, with like, the Chet Holmgren and uh, Paulo Banchero that with the Cade Cunningham, uh, Jalen, uh, Jalen Smith, like there were rookies that were crossing over that in my, it was just confusing. Like, I don't know. I, I, you know, you have a product come out that's after the new product from that year is coming out. It's, it's a little bit confusing. I don't know. Um, Top Sonic still up there. This is probably more of like a breakers product. I mean, let's see. Let me. I'm going to estimate the price, and then I'm going to look on eBay. I bet you the price of these boxes are probably like $250. Um, nope, actually, I was a little bit wrong about that. These are actually way less expensive, which I think is good. Um, let me see. Go to sold. Not terrible. About $70 a box. Um, you know, well, I guess we two for 130 um, yeah, pretty, I mean, that's fine. Decent price for those boxes. I think if you want to, if you want to spice things up and you're a big top of Chrome fan, this is maybe a product you can look into. That's a decent, that's a, like a decent that you'll pull some fine rookies out of. Oops, excuse me. Uh, Don Russell Elite. I, I, I'm not, uh, super into some of the lower end Panini products. I mean, I know that this box is probably going to be overpriced. It's, 
Let me look. Sold. Yeah, 300, 250, 250, 250. Probably you're getting two autographs. There's 20 packs. I mean, I guess it's kind of like uh, 250. This is sort of where I think that some of these boxes should actually be priced. I don't know necessarily if Donruss Elite is one that should be that price, but like I actually think like the Prism, Prism should be priced around that, around that. Like that should be, that should be where Prism is priced at uh, for basketball, for football. I don't know like what they would have sold for from Panini directly, but like I said, that's probably one where it was probably sold to someone for a hundred, 150, depending on the connections that you have. Um, the connections that you have with, uh, I don't know, somebody trying to uh, at, either at Panini or if you're like a distributor or something along those lines. Um, but I think so 2022. So that is, that's last year's class. Well, actually, I guess that's the Benchero, uh, Holmgren class. Um, so yeah, I mean, 20, like I said, 20 packs per box, eight cards per pack, two autographs. You're getting a decent amount for 250 there. Um, and I think 250 is actually a, a fine price. If you're trying to come in and buy boxes of cards, I'd say, I'd say prism. I wish it was around this price, to be honest, like the 250 range versus like the Don Russ elite, which is like, I don't know if it's not, it's not like a monster brand for Panini, but it's a good, it's a, it's a brand that like has that Don Russ, you know, has the Don Russ, uh, the branding on it. The, the cards aren't necessarily, um, like the, it's not like Don Russ with like optic. Uh, I think that would be interesting, I guess. Like the Don Russ is a, obviously a company that Panini bought and that's sort of where, um, they're coming out with those cards. Uh, tops Chrome update. I think this is still a pretty decent product too. I think I did see over this past week, the one of one Wander Franco actually was pulled, which is interesting to me. Um, the, that one of one Wander Franco autograph, sorry, the super factor autograph was pulled. So I don't know if that's, I don't know if that drives down the price of some of these boxes. I mean, it's kind of, it's, a, I think it's an interesting conversation. I don't think it necessarily will. I think that the, you know, Bobby Witt's still going to be in this product. There's still going to be some other decent rookies that you can pull, uh, the autographs, but like maybe baseball is a little bit different where baseball, the autographs is what you're chasing, but like within maybe like, I think, cause the other conversation I saw was like out of Panini prism soccer premier league, the one of one Halan was pulled, which is his first Manchester city. One of one, the, the, the black refractor. Um, so people were saying that like now the chase card's gone, the price of those boxes is going to drop. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I think that there are other tons of great cards that are coming in there. Like I think, you know, the flawless, we definitely saw that where, you know, there was a big chase for flawless basketball over the past. Like it was like the big whatnot um, backyard breaks thing where the, that one of one uh, logo man, LeBron, the triple LeBron logo man was like, everybody was chasing that. And then somehow it gets pulled, um, you know, it gets pulled within like a week or two of like, the thing. And then people put out the bounties. It's, I don't know. It's interesting. Like that definitely affected the price, but I don't think that type of card, you're not really pulling out of a box of the you know, tops Chrome update. Like sure. The one of one autographs of the top rookies are going to be very good, but you're probably not, you're not pulling a card of the stature of the LeBron triple logo, man, or of the warriors triple logo, man. That was another big card that came out of that product. Um, I think we saw decent marketing push around there. Um, and that's maybe what, what drove some of the pricing of those cards up, uh, or the, the, the boxes themselves. But like I said, you're not, you know, you're not really worried about tops Chrome update, uh, pulling a card like that, uh, 2022 tops heritage high number. This is probably one of my second or third favorite products from baseball. At least I love the concept of bringing back the old design, um, and I, I, I think it's actually one of the top rookies you can get. I mean, print runs obviously are increasing with that one, but I think you're probably finding that like the heritage high number rookie, you're probably not seeing like a huge print run spike or sorry, a, a huge print run compared to like a flagship. So I think that's why one reason why, in my opinion, heritage is, I think a decent card that you can buy if you're looking to get into like a Julio Rodriguez or some sort of rookie, you know, Shohei Otani, I think was one of the first, like when I was getting back into cards, 
Heritage High Number had just come out. Um, so like I was, I had pulled like, uh, I think I pulled the Juan Soto and the Shohei Otani from Heritage High Number. And that was, a, you know, that was a really great card. And that could actually even be maybe why I'm a little bit biased towards Heritage High Number because it was one of the first products that I was getting into when I got back into cards. And it was, uh, there was tons of packs and I was able to buy a bunch of them. Like, uh, you know, at the, I think about like a couple at like a hobby shop. And then they also had them in like Newberry Comics and stuff like that. So maybe I am a little bit biased and that's why I like this product. But I think that's maybe one of the other reasons why sports cards is so great is like you can be biased towards the product. And if you're buying and selling it, and people are people are buying the cards you're trying to sell, then that's fine. Uh, there are probably other people that also like those same cards that you like, so you're going to find decent amount of success if you're trying to buy and sell cards that other people like as well. Um, and Heritage High Number is one of those products that I particularly like that you probably you probably can buy and sell them fairly easily. I mean, you're not gonna it's not gonna be crazy like the the pricing uh like especially with you know flagship being pretty decently priced like in terms of singles uh heritage is kind of in that same range if you get them graded that's good um it's just i think it's another a great option for people that are getting in and are trying to learn because it's like there's heritage that comes out at the beginning of the year and then heritage high number that comes out at the end of the year essentially just heritage update uh they call it high number because it's the second uh essentially the second print run of the set so all the number all the cards have high numbers like all of the card numbers are higher than that first set that are coming out uh bowman chrome university football I, phenomenal product this is actually the last one that i'm going to talk about with this one with with these boxes like so let me just scroll down and see if there's anything else i mean the, the as you can see with this episode here there have been a bunch of good boxes that i've kind of discussed and talked about um yeah bowman bowman chrome university I think is one of probably the most revolutionary products that's come out for tops in the past decade. I mean, getting the college licenses and getting cards of players that are in college right now, or well, they're going to be drafted, but they're in their college uniforms in what is their first Bowman Chrome cards. I think last year they came out with it. And I think the Bryce young isn't licensed. And I'm pretty sure that was a first Bowman Chrome card. So like this year, his card doesn't have the first Bowman logo on it. A uh, player like Anthony uh, Richardson, who's like just shot up draft board. Some are saying he might be the number one pick. I don't know if that's going to be true. His one of one actually just sold on eBay. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm.